Hit it. Do it. Gambling, Wait, baby. Started, but hold on. Before we get started, I have to make a Sharia law disclaimer here. Okay. Before I get oh, illustrated. Oh, yes. Yes. Right? I, I do not do gambling of any kind. Abrahamic law. You guys all know. No gambling. Even though I, I bet you yes. a lot of my a lot of most like, doing anyway. I would like to tell everybody uh, to, to Waj's God that Waj has completely rejected my claims. I have enticed him many times to join in on, my, on this project, and he would not. With all due um, respect, so, in Judaism and Christianity, you're not allowed to gamble either. But we'll just, we'll just. We'll. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not sure either. I mean, don't, there's a, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of similarities there. Um, right, Abrahamic log in general, you're not yeah, allowed to. But go on, yeah, because, that's true. But technically, um, what you're. But there was no gambling. football or baseball in, in you know two you know 200 BC either. So. Well, let me give let me give you an example. My friend, all right, my it's friend. Not like Saab, a casino. Of one of my friends, he's he's Muslim, right? His name's mm-hmm. Dov. He's a genius. One of the smartest guys I know. So when he goes, I think he plays blackjack. I, 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 oh, I shouldn't have said his name. I'm blowing him up. But anyway, when he plays blackjack. We right? might be able to edit it out. Yeah, we can edit it out. Uh, he's, <laughs> like, he's like, I'm not gambling. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm like, what do you mean you're not gambling? He's like, no, no, no. If you guys do it, you're gambling. Right. I'm not gambling. That's, a, that's how I feel. Because he's, he's but, counting cards and doing all that stuff. Right. So, on the, uh, so that, that is kind of how I feel. I just Take it away from there. There is a difference between casinos and sports gambling right casinos blackjack is completely different um blackjack and like poker is different like roulette uh or like all the other stupid stuff and you know slots and stuff like that i would i would say that's like off limits you're gonna lose that's just stupid like oh professors thank you for paying thank you for paying taxes to new jersey thank you um let me say something the quants and professors in the quant world they love poker and blackjack yeah poker and blackjack completely different because i I would argue that that is not necessarily gambling, but a game of skill. Um, it's not necessarily a game of chance like the lottery is, but it's, it's actually a game of skill. Um, so yeah, again, I, 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 that's how I would distinguish myself is I'm really not a gambler. Um, I, I just look at the odds. And, and the way you more. actually explained to me, just so everybody understands. I actually consider it an investment. So Kevin broke it down for me. The way Kevin does it, Kevin can't lose. You can't lose. Most the way of the do. time. Yeah, I mean. Most of the time. Probability so, wise, it's on your, it's like, this is stronger right. probably than the stock market. What you got going on here? The racket you got going on. Oh yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So, take um, it away. Take it away from there. Yeah. Not even close. So, I mean, I don't, I, you know, my accounts are already basically banned. So for anybody that's listening right now, I am completely limited by every single legal sports book in America. I mean, in New Jersey, your DraftKings, your FanDuel's, your points bets, your Fox bets, your William Hills, Bet365, I need to stress MGM, this point for the audience. Kevin is flagged from all these advertising you see of these gambling companies, right? They're like, gamble with us, gamble with us. Kevin, all oh, yeah, yeah. On. Kevin is flagged with all, by all of them. So, yeah, let's just, let's just keep that in mind. DraftKings, actually, they're down a lot. And you know why they're down a lot? I'll go get into that. DraftKings is now, as of this morning, I believe an $18 billion company. They have $1.2 billion in cash reserves. They spend $200 million on advertising and sales a quarter, almost a billion dollars a year on a quarter, and they won't let me bet more than 50 bucks on, on any prop. <laughs> they won't let me do it because I beat them for so much, and they just, they just won't let me bet more than $50 or $100, and, and I, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and they actually said, they actually said on their earnings call two weeks ago when they had to come out with earnings why it's down 10%. Because their sports gambling business has actually lost $12 million in, in Q3. Because they actually said, they actually said this. They actually said, our lines were wrong. We, had, we set the wrong lines. And it, I would say that the reasons why their lines are wrong is because they have completely shut out guys like me who can understand what lines are wrong, where I would place a bet. They should honor my bet. But then understand that if I'm betting on that bet, they should adjust it so they make sure that the lines are now right. Um, so instead, they're just completely locking us out, keeping the lines the same, and they're losing a lot of money. And it's just so dumb. Not to mention, they're completely allowing the illegal underground gambling market to thrive, which is a multi-trillion dollar industry. All right, so explain to me, how is it, even though it's legalized in Jersey, how is it that the underground stuff is still work, is still out there and working because they allow you to bet more than a hundred dollars on a bet. So the win, they won't, <laughs> they the, the black market won't stop the winners. Oh yeah, no, they they allow the winners. They love the winners. And the funny thing is, the black market, all these BS sports books that that claim that they're all these you know this great and hoity toity and look at us and we gamble, they don't post their lines 
until the black market posts their lines. So like for Sunday, you know, there's games on Sundays, the black market will post stuff, a lot of, you know, bets on Wednesday, and then the sports books will copy whatever is posted on the, on the, on the uh, black market while their CEO is completely ridiculed in the black market. And like the reason why they're, they're doing, they don't know what they're doing. Apparently they don't, they, they, they have no idea what they're doing. None. They have no idea what they're doing. They should have their licenses revoked. They should not be trusted with their money, with other people's money. They really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I mean, for, I was limited by DraftKings to $2 on a favorite $2 to win less than a dollar. I was limited. I am limited on MGM. MGM is like one of the world, like America's biggest casinos and sports books. I am not allowed to bet on MGM for more than a dollar and 11 cents on any single market. There's not one market. Actually, I just checked that. That was back in January. It, I haven't used it in nine months. I tried it again like a month ago. They raised it to seven bucks. So I'm like, oh, seven bucks. They've, they, they've significantly increased my limits. But I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm still beating them. I'm still beating them. So it's, 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 it really is ridiculous. So again, can you tell everybody how much you've made so far since was the summer, the summer, right? A lot, a lot of money, a life changing amount of money for, for a 24 year old. You're not going to say the amount. Come on. Say the amount. I hit a significant milestone this past weekend. I had a party (laughs) with my dad. Why why don't you want to say dinner and, and, you don't want the sports gambling people to find out or? Yeah, I don't want them to know. Bro, you <laughs> I, already I know. To... You're already labeled. There's, there's, this is got, this, the only thing this could poss- possibly change is maybe the governor gets involved finally. I hope. And, and you know, it really is sad because New Jersey is like, is like what every state is, is emulating on. You know, they're copying what New Jersey's model is. Um, and New Jersey has to get their act together so that every other state um, – copies the, uh, what Jersey does like DC, like what's going on in DC. And I think Tennessee is completely illegal, completely. It, they're taking advantage of sports gamblers and it's so wrong. Oh, so wrong. <laughs> they are, they are. So like, let's say hypothetically, hypothetically giants are playing the Eagles, right? I use this example a lot. If the giants are playing the Eagles and let's say it's 50, 50, right? If I were to wager with you, it would be if the Giants win, you pay me a hundred. If the Eagles win, I pay you a hundred. Fifty fifty. Right. What the sports books do is usually it's <clears throat> and if the Giants win, they'll pay me a hundred, but in return, I'll pay you one ten if they lose. So that's how they make with their money, right? And mm-hmm. if they have you know two people betting on the Giants and Eagles, they're both paying one ten and they only have to pay out a hundred. One side wins, one side loses, they make ten dollars on two hundred and twenty dollars. They make about, you know, what is it, two and a half for Two and a half percent in that situation, but four percent usually. What's happening in DC is that number is a hundred and twenty-eight. It's a if you get paid, if you win, you get paid a hundred dollars. In the in the, in the DC lottery, you have to pay out a hundred twenty-eight dollars minimum, like federal minimum. It's it's a hold that is required on every single bet that you have why, to. Why? Have, where do they get with that number from? Because they actually believe that there is a risk on a, on a sportsbook side, even though minus 110 is a way is, is beyond good to begin with. You know, they're, they're projected to win in the long run, and it's not even close. D.C., because it's actually run by the D.C. lottery and the state government is worried that they can potentially lose money, said, we have to set these so in favor of the sportsbook that there's no way that they would lose, and only losers and suckers will bet on it. Right, which is why we talked about this before. These companies should be built off the the exchange model, like the stock exchange. I think that they should. Model. Right, I think what should happen, and I think you actually alluded to it when on a text message, is that they actually, um, they you think that they might have bought them out, and I, you might be right. Is that they should they should have an exchange, and they actually have exchanges in Europe, and they're just not popular. Um, but gambling has been legal forever over there. Um, is that uh, they Like if we wanted to make a bet, right? I mean, the gambling market is huge. People don't understand how much it is. I mean, I myself am a huge gambler, right? I mean, if you were to just look at my numbers, actually, two o'clock. Is it two o'clock yet? The the numbers for September were supposed to come out today. It is estimated that the over-under number is $800 million was wagered just in the state of New Jersey, which, by the way, is a record. Which is by the the legal numbers. That's not even the black legal, market. Number. The legal number. No, it has nothing to do with black market. Yeah. That's just the legal mon- number for the month of September. And by the way, it blows away the previous record, which was 
August, which I believe was 600 million, which is better than any other month Las Vegas has ever had. And, and like, like the state of New Jersey is already almost double the amount of sports gambling there is in Vegas, which is incredible when you think about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's barely been online. It's been online for two and a half years, if that. And, and it's already doubled what Vegas has been doing. And it has nothing to do with coronavirus. I'm talking about like all-time highs for, for Nevada. And New yeah. Jersey's blowing them away. Um, yeah, so, so what, what, I, what I do, right? I, I, I look for discrepancies. I look for, for, for times where what, what you could, I guess, consider as arbitrage plays. That's, I would say, the majority of my bets. So what, 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 what does that mean, right? So I look where, let's say, again, I love using the Giants-Eagles as an example. So let's say I'm a Giants fan and I live in New York. And I drive down to the Meadowlands where the Giants and Jets play. Across from the Meadowlands is a racetrack, which is where FanDuel is. And I'm sure people have seen FanDuel before. Um, they advertise the absolute crap out of TV and media. They spend $200 million a quarter on advertising. So everybody knows exactly who they are. Now, DraftKings is another big company. They're stationed in Atlantic City. Now, Atlantic City attracts a big market from Philadelphia. FanDuel, which is stationed in the Meadowlands, attracts a big market from New York. So when people bet on New York and FanDuel, a lot of people bet on the Giants. So they have to adjust the lines. They have to, they have to lower the odds on the Giants and increase the, the uh, odds on the Eagles because they want to encourage – they need a balance book, right? They don't, they don't want one or the other because they might be able to – excuse me, to lose like DraftKings did last quarter. Um, they want equal sides, equal money, equal payouts on both sides, and they just take 5%. If they were able to balance it, that would happen. And then you go to DraftKings and Lake City, a lot of people are betting on the Eagles. So in order to balance the books, they have to keep raising the odds of the Giants. So as someone who could bet on both on their phone, I'm able to hit the Giants money line on the uh, Atlantic City bet and the Eagles money, uh, money line on the New York Giants bet. I can make you know 1%, 2%, 3%, 5% either way. Right. So again, let's say hypothetically the true odds are, you know, you know, on the Giants, again, I risk a hundred if they lose, and you pay me a hundred if they win. And FanDuel, I'll go to the Giants and say, okay, if they lose, I'll pay you a hundred. But if they win, you pay me a hundred and ten dollars. And then I'll go to uh, DraftKings and say, on the Eagles, if they lose, I'll pay you a hundred. If they win, you pay me a hundred ten dollars. Again, I am putting myself in one will win, one will lose, but one will make ten hundred and ten dollars and one will only lose a hundred. So I make ten dollars. Right. right, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's half of about what I do, stuff like that. But that's but very that hard to all do. That works because of the fact you have gamblers that are putting emotions ahead of right the numbers. And they're oh, that will always happen. That emotions will, that will always, always happen, right? I mean, even, yeah. yeah, there's always going to be emotions, especially when it comes to fantasy players, especially with players too. I mean, you not only are betting on teams, there's so many different markets that you can bet on. Um, uh, and, you know, you know, people follow players, right? You know, I have fav my favorite players. I follow them because I have a fantasy team. Now I can bet on them. I think they're going to do really well because of the matchup. So I'm going to bet on them. Or I, they really hurt my fantasy team. So I'm going to bet against them. And it just creates lines all over the place. That, that There's always something good available. Always. You know, there's hedge funds coming out there now doing sports betting. I hope the yeah. more the more the more people that enter the, the industry the, the better and I'm hoping I'm really hoping uh, that Barstool Sportsbook when they legalize New Jersey is helping to change that because I'm I'm hoping and they don't create the lines themselves unfortunately um, but uh, or they 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 say they do but they don't um, I'm hoping that because that they are run by gamblers themselves that they'll understand that limiting people to 50 bucks or 20 bucks or in my my case a dollar and 11 cents is completely is completely out of left field completely uncalled for and borderline illegal because what they're doing I mean when you limit a, a guy like me to a dollar and 11 cents I mean they're they're preying on losers I mean well, that's, that's what they're doing they're, that's they're allowing the real losers point there that it's it's illegal that's the real point they're, they're when you're a bad losers. better they let right. you bet all you want but when you're all a you want, better all you want I like, can no, you walk can't bet. In, yeah. I could walk in with my degenerate friends and say, at the exact same time, I want to place the exact same bet for the exact amount of money. They'll look at me in the face and say, dollar and 11 cents. And then they'll go to my buddy, Joe, who loses a lot and say, what's your max limit? Uh, uh, $500,000. What, what, what's the max that you could do? And on the same bet, same time, I've done it. I, I literally have done, walked in, hand in hand. You do one kiosk, I'll do the other, see what we can get. And it's ridiculous. At the exact same time. I mean, is my money greener than the other guy? I mean, it's, does he know something that I don't know? I mean, we're betting at the exact same time. It shouldn't happen. 
Um, but but that's that is what happens. I mean, and then there's another aspect, and this is where actually, believe it or not, for the, the debate kids out there, this is where the the um, the class BDAO, business decision analytics under uncertainty, Professor comes Eckstein. into hand. Professor yes, Eckstein. Eckstein. I, I I I don't know. Eckstein probably never knew me, but I remember his class like it's no tomorrow, except for the Python stuff. Oh come on, his, the Python is the best part. All right. <laughs> Well, the problem is that his Python stuff is copied and everyone just copies it. No one actually remembers it. Um, but the, the, the understanding of the class is that in the long run, if you maximize your profits and minimize your loss, you will win. So let's take that as an example. Keenan Allen is a wide receiver for the Chargers, right? I, he played Monday night or Sunday night. <clears throat> the odds of him scoring a touchdown on the two websites that I trust the most when it comes to projections, Fantasy Pros and Fantrax, had it at 60% and 50%, right? So there was about a 50-50 chance of Keenan Allen scoring a touchdown. And I agree with those odds. Sometimes I don't, but I agree with those odds at that case. The sports books were offering payouts of um, $110 to $130, implying it was uh, – you know, a 55% payout. So instead of 50-50, I get 55%. So that's pretty good. But there was one sports book that offered plus 150, which means they pay out 60-40 in my oh, favor. Okay. So if they lose, I only have to lose 40%. If I win, I, I gain 60%. Yeah. Yeah. So it might not sound like a big deal. If the true odds are around 50-50 and I'm getting 60-40, that doesn't sound like a big deal, right? So if it's 50-50, right? If it loses, I lose 100 but if it wins, I win 100. Now, let's move to the odds I was able to get Monday night. If it loses, I lose 100. But if it wins, I make 150. It's a 50% difference, a 50% profit increase that it was just too much value to pass up. Sure enough, he catches a touchdown within the first 10 minutes of the game and then got hurt and never played again. So sure enough, I won. Uh, Derrick Henry, last uh, Tuesday night. Okay. The same websites, okay, you know Derrick Henry, right? He's a, he's a machine. He actually had two touchdowns, but, and he's had a lot of touchdowns. But the, the two websites, again, I'm going to go back to the two websites, and I'm thinking about it from a math and statistical and investment point of view. The two websites had him at 80% and 90% chance of scoring a touchdown. So let's go with 80%, right? So let's say hypothetically there's a four and five chance that he scores a touchdown. So what would be the true odds for something like that? It would be, if it wins, I make 100. If it loses, I pay 400, right? Because right. there's going to be four times he wins, so that's 100, 200, 300, 400. And one time that he loses, minus 400. So at minus 400 odds, I'm break even. I'm not, I'm not going to win anything, not going to lose anything if I play it out 100 times, 1,000 times forever. You know, Basic I mean, probability, gonna, right. Gonna, right. The sports books, the very worst you can get was minus 300, which in and of itself was valuable, where if it – loses, I only have to pay 300 instead of 400. So that's, that's some value. There, the consensus was between 200 and 250. Again, I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty good. Then there's one sports book, there's always one, that offers 187, where if it loses, I only have to pay $187, and if it wins, I, I make 100. That's two and a half to three times. Which one was I'm it? Two and a half, what? Which, which, which? Uh, William Hill. Oh. William Hill. They they have a sports book in Mammoth uh, Mammoth Racetrack. Okay. Um, and they are actually the world's leading sports book in the world because they they have a huge international presence. But they're very bad for sharp betters. But this is a different market, so I'm allowed to hit a lot of money on these bets because I'll get into that. But anyway, this bet is two and a half to three times more likely to win than it is to lose. So. I mean, those are some of the bets that you have to make. And if you do it a time and time and again and again and again, which is exactly what you learn in X-Science class, which is if you maximize your profit and you run it a million times, you're going to make more profits than you're going to lose. And you're going to be wildly successful. And then the sports will come after you and shut you down. Because the right? odds are in your favor in the long term. Odds are oh, – I always make sure that the odds are favorable. Whereas in, in gambling, like this is what people don't understand. In gambling, the odds are against you. So right. long term, you're always going to lose, right? right. Well, Why are the, you people the gambling? The, the, problem with gam the problem with gambling is that they go, um, like my dad. My dad will be like, oh, I really, <laughs> I, really, I really like the Chiefs tonight. So he'll have one sports book, and he'll go, I'm going to bet money on the Chiefs. And I, you're never going to win that way. You have to make sure that you are getting the best odds every time. 
you have to scan every, if you, if you really believe in the Chiefs, you have to make sure that you're going to get the best odds every time. Um, actually, uh, there's actually a really good example about this. If you're able to increase the odds from 110 to 120 on every bet and you do it 100 times for $100, you get an extra $5,000 profit on that uh, in the long term. $100, 100 times, 500 times. 500 times. You get a $5,000 profit in the long term. I mean, those are, that's a life-changing amount of money. And all, it's all it's about okay. getting the best odds in the long term. You don't have to put much effort into it. You just, it's just simply just- No, I put a lot of effort into it because you got to understand, they treat me like an absolute criminal. Well, that's- um, what... they, they, they treat me like I'm, do, I'm doing something bad. Like I'm the one that, 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 made, that made them pay me these bad odds. As if they didn't create the odds, as if the odds aren't already in their favor. They're, they're treating me like me. I'm the bad guy. But- Don't Forget you have people doing bets for you now or something like that? No, no, um, I might, um, but I, I, don't, I don't do that now. Um, but what I do is I actually throw the scent off by purposely betting bad lines because they have recency bias. I oh, swear to God, I have proof on this. I will purposely lose a small amount of money because I know that the very next bet, they'll allow me to bet a lot of money and I'll make more money than I lost. So that's actually how I, how I, how I track all this stuff. Did you take um, a trip to Las Vegas before COVID or no? Las Vegas, no, but I want to um, when Circus Sports comes. The one, the one sports book that actually allows you to bet money. You're going to have to wait because everybody – I think Vegas is open right now. People are getting COVID right and left. They're not taking any precautions down there. I, they're, they're out of their mind. Um, wear your mask. Wear your visor. Wear, wear everything. I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And if you don't – the only place I've ever felt comfortable going out to eat or going out to, to do anything is at Topgolf in Edison. It's the only place that's like outdoors and I'm separated from everybody and I have a good time. My that's wife the only wants place to go. I feel, that's the only place I feel comfortable. I'm still skeptical over there, but no, it's crazy. I'm just like, getting into golf because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm graduating from college. I got to get into golf. You know, no, just, you're just getting into golf because of all the money you made. I wish you would yeah, say the true. amount, by I'm the way. I'm realizing I got, I got a poster that says risk. That okay. poster is older than I am that my, 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 I think my dad hung up. And there's one that says determination and persistence and goals. And uh, it's, it's ironic that risk is behind me because I'm talking about it. Unfortunately, though, my time is up. I have a funny feeling that when this goes back and COVID goes away, hopefully that we might be able to have another conversation or if someone wants to talk to me about gambling. I do not encourage gambling for everybody. I think only 10% of the gamblers make 80% of the profits. So like, it's not for everybody, but I do encourage smarter gambling, which I think I could help because sometimes you're not gonna be able to stop. Probab you're, you're talking about probab probability-based gambling. That's what oh yeah, about. yeah. That's about yeah. Always gambling. maximizing the profits in, in your favor. All right, well, I mean, listen, Kevin, thank you. And again, I must, I must give the disclaimer about sports gambling. I do not <laughs> yes. condone this at any level, right? And, and I have to do with this uh, disclaimer that, uh, you know, I, I make sure that I, you know, I'm saying the right things for my job. So um, <laughs> no, I, um, I, I, did a, I did a good job. I did um, a great so, job. You didn't tell us anything about the secret, so. Right, I did not. Um, so I hope, uh, I hope everybody that was listening, if they, you know, zoned out or fast forward through it, I hope they, they might rewind and listen to it or reach out to me. No, no, I'm always fantastic. available on LinkedIn. People reach out to me all the time. And I've I always set up a call with everyone. So I wish you the best the rest of the semester and hopefully next semester works out good too. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for the time. Thank you for your time, Kevin. And I hope we can do this again. Of and course. Uh, we'll circle back again more about your idea, your startup idea. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Bye, watch. All right, bye then.